This video is about the February Revolution in Russia. The February Revolution actually took part in March, but the Russians still had the old calendar, so there it was still February. It took mainly place in St. Petersburg, and in the end the Tsar abdicated and the dual power between the provisional government and the communist Petrograd Soviet was established. From my point of view, the events of the actual revolution are not so interesting. Much more interesting are the long-term and short-term causes that led to the revolution. And Russia was underdeveloped during the 19th and 20th century with regards to society and politics as well as economy. And these two aspects you always need when it comes to revolution. Russia was an hierarchically organized system. You can see this in the fact that serfdom was abolished only around 50 years earlier. At the top of this hierarchy there was a Tsar who ruled as an autocratic uh, monarch. So there was a conflict between aristocratic landowners and poor peasants in the countryside. And the cities was a small class of industrialists and a large class of relatively poor workers. There was a revolution before, in 1905. The Tsar let his troops fire on unarmed civilians. That, of course, led to an alienation of the people in the Tsar. However, after a generous strife, the Tsar was forced to accept a, parliament, a second parliamentary chamber, the Duma. About a year later, the Tsar re-established <clears throat> his autocratic rule by a new constitution. That means the people were represented by the Duma, the parliament. However, this parliament had near to no influence on government and politics. Now to the short-term causes. The Tsar was often told, you need to initiate reforms, we need societal and political reforms, but he refused. So, in 1913, 1914, workers went to the streets of St. Petersburg because of the poor working and living conditions. But then, in 1914, there was the outbreak of World War I, and the Russian society gathered behind the Tsar to defend the Russian motherland. But World War I increased the economic problems in Russia. Furthermore, the Germans advanced and pressured the Russians militarily in uh, West Russia. The Tsar decided to assume com command of the forces at the front line, and that led to three massive problems. The people didn't like the Tsar anymore too much, because now he was associated with this unpopular war. The Tsar was a very poor military leader, so um, there was an alienation between him and the forces. Furthermore, of course, if the Tsar is on the front line and not in St. Petersburg, how should he govern the country? Government was taken over by his wife, Tsarina Alexandra. If there's a massive problem, she is of German descent. So she was suspected by many to be a German spy. Furthermore, she was under the influence of the Guru Rasputin, who, by the way, was murdered. And her political leadership was weak and often she changed it. She changed government. 1960. Again, workers went to the street, streets and protested against the poor economic conditions. In the Duma, several parties from different ends of the spectrum cooperated now and wanted reforms. That brought them the conflict with the interest of the Tsar. So, in 1960, end of 1916, beginning of 1917, the Tsar had no support whatsoever. He lost the support in the military, the aristocracy, and for the people. Now the revolution could start. And the actual February Revolution started on the 8th of March 1917. The workers of the Putilov 
plant went to the streets. They were joined by the woman who celebrated the Socialist International Women's Day. By the next day, there were already 200,000 workers and protesters in the street of St. Petersburg. The, protest, the protesters demanded food and an end of the Russian engagement in World War I. Furthermore, they wanted the Romanovs, the family of the Tsar, to abdicate. The Tsar ordered loyal troops to suppress this uprising, but this didn't go well whatsoever, because the majority of the soldiers just changed sides and loyal officers were either killed or fled. On the 12th of March 1917, workers and soldiers formed the Petrograd Soviet, so the core of the communist movement in Russia. On the same day, the Duma formed the provisional government. The revolution spread the next day, the revolution spread to other cities, especially in Moscow. The military and the Duma demanded from the Tsar to abdicate, but he was hesitant. However, he had to see there's nothing I can do and he nominated his brother Grand Duke Mikhail to succeed him. But Grand Duke Mikhail saw I can't do anything here, so he refused to rule as the next Tsar and called for a support of the provisional government. That means the Romanovs have lost the monarchy in Russia. During the next half year, there was a dual power between the provisional government and the communists of the Petrograd Soviet. And then very quickly, the communists won the upper hand. The Tsar was imprisoned and in July 1918, he and his family was murdered. In April 1917, Lenin arrived in St. Petersburg and strengthened the communists. In March 1918, Russia withdrew from World War I. One consequence of the February Revolution was the independence of Finland, the Baltic countries and Poland. However, you cannot only bring this back to the February Revolution, you also have to see the October Revolution, where the Communists ended the period of dual power and seized power in Russia. Not quite, because there was still the Russian Civil War, from 1917 to 1920 or 1923, and the end there was the founding of the Soviet Union on the 30th of December 1922. That was the February Revolution in a bit more than five 